welcome back so uh, in the previous uh, lecture we studied about different uh, yield regulating methods based on different parameters like area like volume like increment like diameter classes so today we'll be discussing a uh, yield regulation met methods based on area so first talking about yield regulation in clear filling system based on area method which can be done by two methods annual coop coops by gross area it is applied to coppice crops which can be regenerated through coppice so they are more regular uh, forest eve or even aged forest and coppice with standard which are which in which we leave some standards for the second rotation they are also uniform or regular or even aged crops it can also be applied to high forest working on clear felling system like teak high forests are the forests which are raised through seeds they are also more or less regular and fairly regular coniferous forests as coniferous forests are usually not regular but if we have coniferous forests which are regular we can apply annual coops by gross area method as well now uh, there is another method called as annual coops by reduced area due to variation in density and site quality reducing factors are applied as i already told you in the previous lecture if uh, we selected two areas two compartments from which we have to get the yield the compartment which is having high density will get the same yield from a reduced area of high density as compared to a normal density or lesser density area that's that's why we called it as reduced area method so in high density forest the actually the area gets reduced now yield regulation in regular shelter world system you must be acquainted with this diagram in the previous course on forest management wherein uh, we have four periodic blocks for just for the purpose of demonstration area is 100 hectare and rotation of the crop is 120 years and rotation period uh, sorry regeneration period is 30 years uh, regeneration period is the period which the crop takes to get established so that it doesn't get affected by any adverse circumstances now uh, we can uh, regulate yield in shelter wood system using this permanent allotment method we permanently allot periodic blocks 1 2 3 and 4 1 gets converted into 4 4 gets converted into 3 3 gets converted into 2 and ultimately if you look at periodic block 1 which is ready for harvest we this is the yield which we get at the end of the uh, specific period see a period of 30 years so we can call that as yield and there's a formula you can estimate on this uh, regulation by area uh, how much of the area is used uh, for uh, getting the yield will be equal to total area of the forest divided by uh, rotation of the crop into regeneration period now this was regulation by area we where we determined area which has to be specified for getting the yield we can have the same thing on the basis of volume we call that as regulation by volume where the allotment is not on uh, not made on the basis of area of the periodic block but it is based on the volume uh, in different age classes uh, and volume of the crop allotted to different periodic blocks so it's not only the area which is allotted to a uh, particular periodic block it is actually the volume which we are supposed to get from that periodic block now we can have a combined uh, you know method uh, using both area as well as volume we call that as regulation by area and volume it combines both area and volume so while allotting any periodic block we keep into consideration the area of the periodic block as well as the volume that we are supposed to get at the end of the period so both things are taken into consideration 
Now, yield regulation in regular shelter wood system. How how does it work? Uh, first was the permanent allotment method, wherein we allot the uh, different periods, different blocks, which are fixed, which cannot be increased or decreased. Now, with the passage of time, there was a relaxation. Uh, there was f uh, relaxation, uh, you know, done to this methods, wherein we can uh, revoke uh, the periodic block at the end of the period when periodic block 3 was supposed to get uh, converted to periodic block 4 but we realized some portions of the uh, periodic block did not meet the expectations of being converted from lower age group to the higher age group the increment uh, the you know growth was uh, affected due to certain reasons and uh, so it was not fit to be carried to the next periodic block so adjustments uh, can be made in this uh, allotment method uh, to equalize the area of various periodic blocks. And we have to uh, understand that only periodic block 1 is of immediate importance and is definitely allotted because that is the periodic block which is ripe, which is mature for the purpose of felling so as to get the yield from there and the other periodic blocks may be reallotted at each revision if necessary according to crop conditions. Now, uh, moving a bit uh, relaxed uh, in, you know, uh, in a relaxed way towards a single allotment method wherein only one periodic block that is the mature period, periodic block, periodic block 4 is allotted which uh, whereas none of the other periodic blocks is allotted uh, because we never know that there are going to be some unforeseen natural causes which may cause disruption in the movement of those other periodic blocks. So, uh, but here you have to remember that period means a period of 30 years or 20 years depending on the rotation period and the regeneration period of the crop period is still fixed and the area is also still fixed fixed we cannot increase or decrease the period we cannot increase or decrease the area uh, at the end of each period where from we have to get the uh, yield now <coughs> this method was evolved by french uh, from fixed periodic block method <laughs> As a, as a, as a um, uh, flexibility in the previous method. Now, being more flexible, we move to floating periodic block method, C4, wherein there is only a lot allotment of ripe areas that are ripe for regeneration and, uh, you know, are uh, composed of a mature crop which is ready to fell to get the yield. Now, we have to understand here that the limit to size and length of the period has been removed now if you if we uh, face with a problem wherein we uh, see that uh, uh, instead of a period of 30 years it will take 35 years for the crop to fully mature um, so that the regeneration under it may come up as a period of, as a period of block one we can extend the period to five years. It's not fixed like in the previous method. And also uh, the size. If we uh, we have marked earmarked 30 hectare, hectares for uh, felling uh, after the regeneration period, we uh, observe that a portion of five hectares is not fit to be carried to the next periodic block means it's not r fully ripe yet so we can leave that uh, 5 hectares and we can go ahead with 30 minus 5 is equal to 25 hectares we can uh, harvest uh, for yield uh, only the area of 25 hectares so there's a lot more flexibility in this method and uh, all over mature mature or nearly so and ready for regeneration are included in floating periodic block. Now, yield, uh, you can see a floating periodic block method was evolved in France. 
uh, under the name of quartile blue method. You can see in the diagram for the purpose of demonstration that these are the areas which you can see in blue uh, designated as quartile blue. These are the areas which are earmarked as a ripe fit for periodic block to be allotted for the purpose of felling to get the yield and rest of the area is left blank which is known as quartile blank. So you can see the areas which are definitely allotted are in blue and the uh, and you can see they are scattered. They are now not concentrated at a single place and the area which is not allotted known as quartile blank is the rest of the area. Now uh, we see how we have evolved uh, 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 for yield regulation in regular shelter wood system. First, we had self-contained periodic blocks with permanent boundaries. Then we uh, made it more flexible with fixed but scattered periodic blocks, as I show you, um, you know, uh, showed you in the previous diagram, with permanent boundaries. Now, then we moved uh, in a more flexible approach to periodic blocks scattered or self-contained with boundaries that are subject to revision we can revise those boundaries those are not permanent then uh, moving ahead again we uh, moved to met we come came up with a map method single periodic block or self-contained with fixed area and period then ultimately floating periodic block passing gradually over the whole forest. It's not concentrated at one place. This is how the yield regulation in regular shelter wood system evolved over the period of time. Thank you.